I'll, I'll just start by showing you the it's here so he is always talking to the paper he's the great man he's the the father figure of uh, of art in Iceland that's as simple as that but here you can see he says Blauer Blomith, the blue flower. Can't draw a hairbell. Get a technath blau klucku. And then you see all these hairbells around. So then I think he's using his fingers even to draw them. I think he's extremely important person for Icelanders and the whole world and his ideas about uh, preserving nature about the uh, welfare of animals about the whales they are so ahead of his time this is a berry twig so but he discovers the uh, uh, the beauty of the lava and the moss so uh, that's really what he changed everything really. He, he, he uh, paints or draws uh, uh, bilberries or blueberries uh, all his life actually, but they become much uh, sort of rougher and he, 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 he paints much uh, quicker uh, later, later on. Expressionistic. Well, he's quite famous for painting things around the 30s, uh, 1930 when. There is a big celebration because of the anniversary of Parliament, uh, the thousand year anniversary of Parliament. And uh, a lot of other painters were painting in Tinkvellir. But it's not really uh, the history of the place he's painting. He's, the, he's looking down on the ground and he's discovering something uh, around that time. He's discovering the lava and, and make, making us become aware of it. He is this big figure in, in the in, in, in art in Iceland, you cannot really. Uh, well, you either either you have to just take in his influence, or you have to just uh, look away from it. <laughs> Here is in his studio when he's 60, and you see all these flowers, uh, these flower bouquets, and what he does, he he, he paints them and uh, gives them back to the people sometimes. These are all the orchids that grow in Iceland. And this summer I finally found the most rare one. Since I was 10 years old, I, I wanted to be an artist. I saw an exhibition of Caraval in 1965, I remember that. Big exhibition, but that wasn't the inspiration for becoming an artist. Well, my parents had a little hut outside Reykjavik, where we went in the summers. And I can't remember anything else than uh, being fascinated by flowers and that's probably where I got the idea to become an artist. Yes, this is uh, something my uh, grandfather got from Karvar. He, uh, he and my father, they both worked at the post office. And this is from my father. These are also Happy New Year and Happy Christmas. Just for my father, a, a typical Christmas card <laughs> on glossy paper. Happy pictures, happy Christmas. And this is the article, or it's a reprint of the article from 1958. Uh, uh, the big heart. Well, you have to keep his uh, spirit alive. It is important for us now, in this day and age. Uh, uh, he uh, is still speaking to us. He's not just uh, a figure from the past. You can see these four paintings, small paintings here. These are from his uh, last years. The names of these paintings are like flowers speaking in the meadow and then it's winter flowers coming. He is uh, probably uh, just in his studio and he is is a very he's an old man and he's very lonely i can feel it i had always sort of uh, kept his influence away he was too big 
for me actually to take in everything. I try to look away from it all the time actually, and, and, but people kept saying, uh, uh, e even uh, I had a big show here 12 years ago, and they said, now we have the new Karval. <laughs> and really, I, I hated it. <laughs> Actually, I, I, uh, to be, uh, I'm not a new Kerval. Uh, uh, there will be never, uh, there will never be another one. So, um, so it's a, a healing process for me actually to go through <laughs> and make this show. In the 30s, he's uh, he's uh, working a lot with with abstraction, with cubism, and and you see the the. Flowers, they become cubistic. There is a flower waist and there is a hat. And there is probably a sheep here. It's, I feel it's like a map, maybe the map of Iceland. There's a figure here, and there's an eye here. You can always sense his person in everything he does, even the, some small scribbling. It, it is poetry and everything, really. Just. In, in his uh, brushwork, and, uh, he was the image of an artist. He 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 was the free, this free person, this person who could do whatever he liked. He's an uh, image maker. He made. Uh, he's one of those who made uh, uh, Icelanders what they are, are today, and, and made them believe in themselves as a nation. <laughs> the lava and the rocks are, were not thought to be beautiful before when we would look uh, with the, uh, at the country with the eyes of the farmer or look at the sea with the eyes of the sailor. It's, uh, it's the, the vision of the, the artist uh, or, or the one who just likes, uh, who loves uh, just life and, and, and the earth. This is a, it's a caravan hat, it's this famous drawing, ink drawing. I wanted to do a, a painting with a figure, which I never do. The figure is always the, the person looking at the painting rather than a figure inside the painting. But this one will probably be hidden away. It's, uh, the last painting uh, he made is just of an empty palette, which he left on his easel in, in the studio when he had gone to the hospital. He, 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 it was a statement, but with this exhibition, I uh, sort of I'm coming to terms with him, and I'm going. He's he, he's coming. Uh, uh, he's, he's coming alive for me. He's uh, he, uh, he, and uh, now I can really. I, I'm also uh, in my sixties <laughs> now. I think I, I want to turn everything upside down in my world. Now, when I'm that old, and uh, I feel I, it's nice to grow old with him. He's helping me to <laughs> to become a, an old eccentric, maybe like he was. Uh.